welcome to Disney and Beyond, your one-stop shop for all things Disney and pop culture. It's Friday, so that means it's time for a Friday feature. If you don't know what the Friday feature is, it's basically a series where I give my thoughts and opinions on a certain topic. Recently, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta went live and I had a chance to play on it for a bit. Um, there is some controversy surrounding the beta, so I thought, why not put in my two cents worth of what I think. Like I said, the Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta was live recently. Um, if you don't know what Battlefront 2 is, it's basically the sequel to 2015's Star Wars Battlefront, which is a first-person shooter game on all consoles. It's on PC, Xbox. It's also on PC. Um, I had a chance to play on it. It was live for, I think, almost a week. Uh, it was extended. Um, the gameplay is very good. The game itself looks beautiful. Uh, it's a big step up from the previous Battlefront title. Um, there was a lot of criticism with the previous Battlefront with regards to the lack of content and the lack of progression in the game. Uh, also, some people found that the gunplay in the game wasn't particularly satisfying. A lot of the guns felt the same. There was it was basically a point-and-click game, if you was on PC. Um, but they've improved all of that on the new Battlefront system, on the new Battlefront game. Um, there's a lot more content. Uh, it's doubled in size, basically. They're going to be covering all the Star Wars eras, so the prequels, the original trilogy, and the new trilogy. Uh, we're going to be getting lots more heroes, lots more maps, lots more weapons, lots more vehicles. So all of that they've addressed, they've improved, and as I say, it looks stunning, and gameplay-wise, it does feel good, and it is a good game to play. It's fun, and all the things a game should be. However, with regards to the progression system, um, DICE have implemented a loot box or loot crate system. Now, you can buy these loot crates for in-game currency, or you can pay actual real money to purchase loot boxes. And in these loot boxes, you get what they call star cards. Now, these star cards provide various uh, abilities or boosts to your abilities that you have per class. Uh, the game is broken down to different classes. You have assault, heavy, specialist, and one other that off the top of my head I can't remember what it is, officer. So heavy, specialist, and officer. And you get star cards to upgrade their abilities, and you get star cards to change or swap abilities and give you different ones. Uh, each star card has four tiers, and the higher the tier, the better the perk of that star card. So, for example, if you've got a star card that gives health regeneration, on the first level it might be, say, 5% quicker, on the second, 10% quicker, 20% quicker, 40% quicker, and it goes up the different tiers. The problem with this is, if the progression system is tied to these loot crates, somebody that has money to waste could purchase, say, £200 or $200 worth of loot boxes on day one and power up their soldier instantly. If they're coming up against a player in the multiplayer that can't do that or doesn't want to do that, that player is then going to be far overpowered compared to those that aren't, which means Star Wars Battlefront 2 then becomes a pay-to-play game. Now, in 2017, pay-to-play just isn't going to fly. Uh, audiences, gamers, nobody wants to pay to win. It's understandable in games that are free-to-play, 
quite often you get free to play games that have loot boxes that you buy and that will give you certain perks. That's understandable, they have to monetize the game somehow. I understand that AAA games also need to be monetized, but having a pay to win scenario in a game that's already $50 in the US just isn't understandable. Um, I, I personally will maybe buy the odd one or two loot box down the line, but I certainly won't go putting in hundreds of pounds worth, uh, because it's just not worth it. Um, DICE have addressed the issue. Uh, they are working on it. They said that the what was available in the beta wasn't the full progression system, that it wasn't uh, representative of what will be in the final game. It was just a taster of what is to come. Uh, they are saying that, you know, you sh the players have still got to grind out the hours, they've still got to level up their character, and you do that via playing the game. So you may get a star card, but you may not be able to use it until you get to that level. Uh, also, what's in the loot boxes wasn't particularly indicative as to what will be in the loot boxes during the actual final game. Um, it will be a lot more balanced, it will be a lot more fair, I guess. Um, they have released a press statement, which I will link in the description below. Um, but yeah, it seems as though they have taken it on board. They will still have purchasable loot boxes with real money, because they have moved away finally from the season pass business model. So the only other way to monetize the game is to sell loot boxes. And if they want to continually create free updates and create new content periodically, they need to monetize this content. That I completely understand. So <clears throat> although they may balance the system better, there may still be a slight element of pay to win. Can't say for certain, but it's a possibility. Only time will tell. But in my opinion, I don't want a game. I would rather pay for a season pass than play a game that I have no chance of winning because now I'm coming up against players that have got more money to waste than I have. It creates an unfair system. It creates an unenjoyable game. But as I say, time will tell and um, hopefully DICE will work at it. I know they're working on some other things uh, that were mentioned in the beta. Um, they're working on changing the strike game mode. We got to play four game modes in the beta. Galactic Assault, which is the big uh, 20v20 uh, game mode. Uh, with uh, Very much like Walker Assault that was in the original game, but a lot more story driven and a lot more objective based and the objectives change depending on the map that you're playing on. Uh, we've also played Starfighter Assault, which is basically the same mode but for Starfighters, uh, spaceships. Uh, we got to play Strike, which is a kind of a smaller version of Galactic Assault. It's an 8v8 um, objective-based game mode on a much smaller, more focused map. And in my opinion, that was the most enjoyable mode out of the beta. And <laughs> there was also a um, uh, another, uh, Blast is also coming back, which is a 10v10 uh, mode. Um, basically, it's kind of a TDM style game where you play on teams and get high skills. Um, and I also think about Heroes vs. Villains, which is in my opinion, the best way to play the heroes, because the heroes now are based on a point system. You build up your points during gameplay to purchase hero reinforcements, and rather than picking them up, but the trouble is I only have one hero per game, or one of each hero per game, so the top players are going to get those heroes first, and if they're good with those heroes, they're going to keep that hero for a long time. And 
in my opinion, DICE need to decrease the point value to make it easier for casual players. Uh, casual players are going to find it quite hard to get a hero in the main game mode, other than heroes versus villains, where you'll be guaranteed to play a hero at some point. So, there are a few issues still to address. They are addressing them. As I say, I'll leave the uh, link in the description below. Um, but, I think they've got a month left before the game comes out. I've pre-ordered it, I've pre-ordered it after they revealed it at E3, so I've had it pre-ordered for a while, but it's Star Wars, regardless of the controversy, regardless of what people think, it will still do well, because it's Star Wars, and people will buy it based on the fact that it's Star Wars alone. You know, it could be the worst game ever made. Thousands will still buy it. So, yeah, that is that was my time, in my opinion, of the uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 beta and the Star Wars Battlefront 2 game, which comes out in November. Okay, so that was a very brief Friday feature this week. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Uh, if you did like the video, please hit that thumbs up button as it really does help us out and really does help the channel to grow. Also, if you don't want to miss any more Disney and Beyond content, hit that subscribe button as again, it's very much appreciated and really does help the channel to grow. I would love to hear what you guys think of the Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, how did you spend your time in the Battlefront 2 beta? Uh, what do you think of the loot crate system and the progression system? Let me know in the comments below. But that's it from me today. I will see you next week on Wednesday with a new video because Wednesday is now the new day for news. It's no longer Tuesdays. But until next time, to infinity and beyond.